from NBC News, this is Today with Matt Lauer and Meredith Vieira. There are also new details this morning about the sex assault case against one of the world's most influential bankers and what his life is like now behind bars. NBC's Jeff Rossin is here with the latest. Hey, Jeff, good morning. Hi, Ann. Good morning to you. Law enforcement sources tell NBC News Dominique Strauss-Kahn is now on suicide watch inside Rikers. And this morning, we're also learning more about the hotel maid, the woman who police say he sexually assaulted. She says she had no idea who he was, a powerful banker and major French politician until well after the attack. In a small 11 by 13 jail cell on Rikers Island, Dominique Strauss-Kahn has gone from a power suit to a gray jumpsuit. He eats his three meals inside his cell in isolation on suicide watch. His only companions, the guards walking his empty corridor. He's living in a cell in solitary confinement all by himself, a very, very lonely existence. Strauss-Kahn was staying here inside this luxury Manhattan hotel. The maid says she was told to clean suite 2806 that was unoccupied. But when she walked in, there he was, a man she says she didn't recognize. Strauss-Kahn, naked, coming out of the shower. According to the criminal complaint, he sexually assaulted her twice. The attack included oral sexual conduct by forcible compulsion. The maid is now in hiding, and she's hired a lawyer. She has been caught up in this uh, whirlwind um, in which um, she not only was the victim of this crime, but now um, has essentially been isolated from the world as she knew it. As police test for a DNA match between the scene and Strauss-Kahn himself, his lawyer hinted at a possible defense. The forensic evidence we believe will not be consistent with a forcible encounter. As in consensual, legal experts say prosecutors will need more than DNA to prove otherwise. Even if law enforcement matches DNA from the victim to DNA to the accused, it doesn't mean attempted forcible rape. It could mean consent. Then there's his past. In 2008, he admitted to an affair with a co-worker. But it's the accusations of this woman that, if true, suggest Strauss-Kahn may have a history of sexual violence. This French writer claims that in 2002, he tried to rape her. She didn't file charges then, but her lawyer says she plans to now. But that may not matter here in a New York courtroom. I don't think his past is necessarily going to come in unless he takes the witness stand and testifies about his good character. Then he opens the door to prior bad acts coming in. Strauss Kahn is being held without bail this morning. His lawyer says he'll plead not guilty to the charges. Sources close to the case tell NBC News the maid will testify later this morning in front of the grand jury. Ann? Jeff, meantime, U.S. Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner is quoted as saying that this man is no longer in a position to run the IMF. Is there now a big amount of pressure to push him aside? Yeah, these were the first comments, and they're actually very important comments by the U.S. Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner. Says he is in no position to run the International Monetary Fund. I mean, this is an organization that controls a trillion dollars, sends money to countries in deep crisis. So how could he run it from jail? No indication, though, that he will resign, according to to publish reports, the board of the IMF is still trying to reach out to Strauss Kahn's legal team to figure out exactly what his plans are. But since he denies the charges, no question about it, this is sensitive. For now, and the IMF is named the number two in charge as the interim managing director. But once again, no indication if or when Strauss Kahn could step down. All right, Jeff. Jeff Rosson, thank you so much. It is now 710. Now here's Meredith. And thank you very much. Jeffrey Shapiro is the attorney for the alleged victim, and he is with us exclusively. Mr. Shapiro, good morning to good morning. you. Jeff Rosson mentioned that uh, your client is expected to testify before a grand jury this morning. Can you confirm that? or at some point today? I, it's, I believe it will take place some, at some point today, yes. And what is her mindset heading into that? Uh, she has been um, in a whirlwind since this has taken place. Uh, this is a woman who is a rape victim, the victim of a physical assault, who since this has taken place and since she reported it to a security uh, at the hotel, has not have, had a moment of peace. She's not been able to return home. She's not been able to seek any help. Um, so where willing, is she now? She's in a, being held in a safe place, uh, fortunately now with her daughter. We've reunited her with her daughter uh, as of uh, 
two nights ago. Yeah, from what I understand, the reports of, of, of your client, her daughter, is 15 years old. That's correct. She is 42? 32. She is 32, I'm yes. sorry, originally from uh, Guinea. Guinea. Yes. Uh, and what else can you tell us about her? Uh, she came to this country under difficult circumstances, essentially seeking asylum in the United States uh, with limited opportunity for education or experience in Guinea, came here to make a better life for herself and her daughter. She's a single mother. Uh, she came here, she learned to become a chambermaid, which she was delighted to have this job. Uh, worked in this hotel for approximately three years before this incident took place. There was a report on uh, the cover of the New York Post today uh, that she has been living in housing that is specifically set aside for people who are either uh, HIV positive or have AIDS. Can you confirm or deny that? Absolutely not. She lived in a sublet apartment in the Bronx uh, with absolutely, that's outrageous. Yeah, you, you've also said that she is uh, afraid, afraid that someone might try to hurt her. Can you be more specific? Have been, there have been threats against her life? I think what you have to understand and what the world has to understand about her is that she came from a part of the world where uh, laws were few and far between and that um, justice wasn't readily available, at least to people without means. Um, and uh, that's why she's grateful to be in the United States. But nonetheless, when she found out that this encounter that she had had was with a man of great power and wealth, uh, she fears not only for herself, but maybe more importantly, uh, her daughter. In a, on, on Monday, uh, the lawyers uh, for uh, Dominica, they said that they were going to prove that this was not a forcible encounter, that we believe the evidence will show this was not consistent with a forcible encounter, meaning that the sex was consensual. What is your reaction to that? Well, I, I think that um, when a jury uh, hears her testimony and sees her in person, when finally she can become public with this and tell her story, I think that their claims of consensual um, sex or uh, encounters will um, are not true. There was nothing consensual about what took place in that hotel room. When did she? When was she aware of who this man was? She not did not until, know at the time. Not until the day after. And not how did she find out? A friend called her to tell her, "Do you have any idea who this man is that you've um, that did this to you?" And what was her reaction when she found out who he was? Uh, scared, incredulous, um, not knowing what to do. Uh, keep it, and at that point, she already realized she could not go home because when she attempted to go back to her apartment, um, it was, you know, there were 30 media people outside. She was scared for herself, had to be taken away. Uh, she's li literally lived in hotel room from hotel room day after day. She feels that she can't go home. Um, she feels like she's been excised uh, from her life. Uh, doesn't know what her future will bring um, and uh, doesn't know how she can ever resume a life, uh, much less how to deal with having been assaulted uh, and raped. But with all of that, she is prepared to testify. The, she is prepared to do whatever she is asked to do, uh, which she has done cooperated with the New York City Police Department, uh, the district attorney's office, hours and afters and hours of involvement. Um, she doesn't have an agenda. She's doing this because she believes it's her responsibility to do so, and she will do that. All right, Jeffrey Shapiro, thank you so much for taking time out to talk thank to you. us this morning. We appreciate it. Thank you.